that work? Yeah. Oh, thank you for the follow, A Dead Music. Thank you so much. What's up, homie? Word is Bond. I'm just vibing out. Um, I'm giving this streaming thing a try because uh, that's what you do when the world is under quarantine, I suppose. But also I wanted to communicate with fans and just hang out with people and, um, you know, open up a line of communication between myself and the people who like what I do. So here we are. It's 21 heel flips. Call me Jenna Tills. Okay, hello, Jenna Tills. <laughs> Tell your friends to come hang out. Um, I do have Ableton open if we want to do some music stuff, but I thought I'd just test the waters by just chatting first and just, like, seeing what's up with everyone. Seven viewers. Wow, that's my, that's my absolute most I've ever had. That's very exciting. Come say hi. And tell your friends to come say hi. Dewey Music, thank you for the follow. Quicks Official, Wave Racer, I'm such a big fan. Love you and your work, dude. Thank you very much. That is so, so sweet. Um... Yeah, look, I'm just giving this a try for the first time ever. Let's see how it goes, I suppose. Hopefully the setup is working. If you guys are having any issues with the audio or the video, please let me know and I'll try to fix it. Doing music, huge fan. Thank you so much and thank you for the follow. Wow. I have a keyboard set up and everything. So, yo, these streams are just getting crazy. <laughs> is this crazy? <laughs> I didn't know that this would be considered crazy. Um, but look, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to not get snowed under in this, uh, quarantine situation. So plus it's nice to be able to, um, like show people what I do in the studio and stuff. Cause like I have Ableton open and I can, um, I can like show you cool things in here if I want to, but I'm not sure if I have anything in particular that I'm going to like demonstrate today but um it's cool that i can do that if i want to or if there's anything that you guys want to see you should definitely tell me and um, in a future stream i can probably make that happen yeah i hope you're feeling okay weird times huh it is very weird times um especially weird for people like me who um, work in the music industry and don't really um know what to do with ourselves now that everything to do with um entertaining people is cancelled um the, the only thing that i could think of to really do was to obviously continue working on music in the studio which i'm doing and also just trying to connect with people online which i'm also doing so here we are let's um let's make some noise for fun as well Hopefully people watching can hear everything okay and see everything okay. I have no idea. Actually, let's run the analog synth into Ableton. Let's get the input going. Please leave suggestions if there's anything you'd like to me to like demonstrate or show from a music point of view. I know that not everyone is interested in music production stuff, so I wanted to make this kind of content inclusive for everybody who likes music, but not necessarily the nerdy technical side of music production. So, um, like, I obviously those are two different things, and I don't I want this to be engaging for everyone. So, um, yeah, let me know. Wow, nine people. Crazy. I don't even have nine friends. Um. 
uh, instrument, external instrument, MIDI two, free bass, audio from seven eight. <laughs> Clipping. That's weirdly clipping in my headphones, but I don't know why. Okay, well, I'll figure out the audio side of things as we go. To be honest, I think to start out, it's just cooler to like talk to people and like gauge a bit of interest about what people are interested in seeing and hearing or talking about. Um, I'd also need to make sure like the technical side of the streaming is working because that's a difficult thing to figure out. Thanks everyone for joining. I think I'd enjoy just seeing how you create and form ideas personally. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, that's what I figured would be the case. A lot of people were asking me to go through um, old project files. Devon Digital, thank you so much for the follow. Um, oh, wow, a bunch of people have followed. Magistry, thank you for the follow. Tension TTV, thank you for the follow. Um, yeah, no, so I... I was asked to, like, go through old project files of songs that I've done in the past, and... Um, I thought that could be cool, but firstly, I can't do that straight away because I'd have to sort of go through the old hard drive and like make sure that I can find everything. And then I'd have to sort of see logistically how I could de actually broadcast that. And also I wanted to do something a little more up to date. I wanted to show people how I create now rather than like going back through old stuff. Cause I actually think that I'm so much better than what I used to do. Um, not that, not that the ba the old stuff is bad, it's great, but like, um, I think it's cool to focus on the now because I've learned so much stuff about production. Like my studio has become so much better and more impressive and like my skills have gone way up. So yeah, like I think it's, it is cool to like start projects from scratch on the stream and like maybe even get people to, to like send in particular like suggestions or um, like, a lot of people like ask me questions about how I do certain things or like why I make certain production choices and I thought this would be a good platform to, to demonstrate a bit of that. But yeah, like I said, just f finding my footing right now and giving this a go for the first time. Also, can you play other people's music on Twitch without getting in trouble? I don't know what the copyright situation is on Twitch. If anyone knows, let me know. Doing music, I've always gotten lost in your chords and wondered how you figured out the progressions or the process of that. Okay, I can sort of explain that a little bit. That's a great question. Um, I think I've always had a naturally a very good ear for interval recognition. And if you know anything about musicology, which most people probably don't, it's um, interval recognition is the space between notes. So if you have, for example, an A and an A sharp and you play them like connects to each other or like at the same time you can recognize the distance between the notes pitch wise which is like and I, I've been able to do that with like every single pitch always like I don't know why I just have naturally always been able to do that um, your VOD will get partially muted if copyright claimed but after the fact but not muted live okay cool that's good to know um, wow a lot of people coming in and saying hi so yeah the chord stuff I just like literally imagine the intervals in my head and I can figure out the harmonies based on the interval recognition and like that's probably the number one thing that I've always thought gave me the the skills to like be able to do good chords so look up interval recognition and how you can improve your interval recognition if that's something you're interested in trying Devon Digital I am live um, 
for the first time. <laughs> I'm nervous. Um, but it's cool that you guys are tuning in and asking questions. Please send more questions if you have them. Um, Henry with like a billion Y's just hopped in to say your Ryan Must Be Destroyed remix had me hooked on your music. Then in late 2014, I watched your Boilers Room mix and fell in love with your sound. Thank you very much. That's taken it back like six years. It's quite a while. But um, yeah, that's that's my favorite remix I've ever made. Just because like, I think musically it's just really, really fun also really fun to play live uh and the boiler room thing was surreal but and um now looking back on that i (laughs) i had to rush that put that together so quickly and like i rushed it because i was in london and they like hit me up the day before and they're like do you want to do this thing and i was like obviously yes but i was in no way prepared so i had to just very quickly put some shit together and um and it threw something together really quickly and it wasn't that good but whatever um it's what it is what it is uh she and nine would archiving these sort of things on youtube be something you would be interested in doing in the future um yeah probably i'd have to make sure that whatever i archive is like um acceptable to be archived like copyright wise um and obviously i don't want to infringe on anyone's copyright and also i want to make sure that i'm not putting anything that is going to get released in the future or whatever so um I'm treating it more casually right now, but definitely if there's something more concrete or more like um, engaging or interesting that people really want to like come back to, then I'm totally happy to do that. I have even thought about just like making little videos, but right now I kind of need a bit of interaction to make the content. So that's what I'm doing here on Twitch. Devon Digital. Saw you live with Sean Wasabi in Denver in 2015 on the Flash Drive mini tour. I miss that day so much. So do I. That was that was fun. Denver's a great a great city. Unit 010. Thank you so much for the follow. Um yeah, that was a fun tour. The LA date was really cool. I remember the Denver date. Um it's a cute little like fun venue. I was nervous as hell, but you know, it was fun and Denver's a fun town. Every time I've been to Denver, I've had a great time. Thanks for the follow, Henry. Um, yeah, God, that was a long time ago as well, but no more going to LA for a while, I think, under these conditions, <laughs> not just for me, but for anyone. No going anywhere for a while, I suppose, to be honest. Um, that's just how it is. Tune Rock, oh, Turner Rock, sorry, Turner Rock, your music, your new music and a couple of oldies were basically the soundtrack of my life for winter, so thank you. Well, thank you. That is so lovely to hear. Um, I'm glad that you're into the new music. That's probably my favorite music that I've made. And um, the even new new music, which you haven't heard yet, is more down that path even even more, which is exciting. It's, it's quite a shift, but it's, I think, the best music I've made. What have you been doing during this quarantine? Making new music or working on yourself or a bit of both? Definitely a bit of both. Um, I've, I mean, I spend every day making music anyway at the moment because I'm not on a touring cycle right now. Um, I mean, I did Falls Festival at the beginning of the year, but that was like kind of a one-off little run of shows and like a bit of a um, like a stepping stone in, in like building my show. So I don't really count that as a tour. But yeah, so I've been like just constantly making music nonstop, working on like a bigger body of work for quite a while. And I'm just continuing to do that. But in all honesty, this quarantine thing has sort of shaken up life a bit for everyone. So I've actually been like not doing it as much this week, this past week, because I've been figuring out what to do because I can't like it's I know it, it's counterintuitive, but it's just a very weird time. And like, I think psychologically, if you're distracted by that kind of thing, it's very hard to be creative, um, which is part of the reason why I've set up this streaming thing, because I want to be able to like have something else other than just locking myself in a studio which is what I do anyway normally but the quarantine somehow makes it like less easy to do that it's very weird (laughs) but you know there's lots of things that I can do and I am working on music and I have so much to finish and so much to show and I I'm so excited about it 
um, Devin Digital. Well, this whole time I've loved your music and I had the lovely opportunity to blast summer rain in the summer while it was raining up in the Rocky Mountains and it was so fun. Well, that is just the perfect setting. And I'm so glad you got to enjoy that in that setting. That's so awesome. Um, Unit 01, who is your favorite artist out right now? Great question. Let me think about that. Um... I mean, my favorite music at the moment is all coming out of the Dirty Hit label, which is a UK label they're responsible for artists like the 1975, Japanese House, No Rome, Pale Waves, uh, Rina Sawayama, all that kind of stuff. And they, and Biba Doobie and like other amazing artists, um, they just have such fantastic composition and taste and just like everything they put out, I am engaged in. And, um, the 1975 are my favorite band as well. And everything they do is like impeccable in my eyes. Um, I've seen them live a bunch of times too. And they're just the best. They're so inspiring. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't like, it's weird because it's not as like electronic bass as you might expect. I've kind of shifted away into more, um, traditional forms of production and like textural things like playing a lot of guitar, playing a lot of bass and keys and, um, uh, using vocals and all that kind of fun stuff still use the synths and like the cool drums and all that kind of stuff and the hard hitting stuff but like um it's definitely a stylistic shift into something a little more organic and a little more um i don't know it's a hard thing to describe but it's good Henry says, do you ever plan on releasing a full-length album or sticking to EPs like the Fly Strike EP? Um, no, I don't I don't plan on sticking to EPs, to answer your question. I do not stick, I do not plan on sticking to EPs, which means I am looking to expand my bodies of work. I can't really say too much right now, but I have enough music for something more than an EP, if that is anything to go off. <laughs> Uh, Sheer Nine, 1975 Live are incredible. That's that's correct. I've seen them three times and they were incredible each time. They got better each time. They just keep getting better. They're so good. Devin Digital says, My stream cut out while you were reading that message. Regardless, it's 1.45 a.m. right now, so I'm going to go to bed, but I can't wait for more tunes plus possibly streams. Have a good time. Thank you so much. Good night, Devin Digital. Have a good sleep. I hope everything is all well on your side of the world, and I look forward to doing more of this. And speaking to you again soon thanks for tuning in <laughs> um she and nine says that's so exciting it is indeed and it gets more exciting by the day but look because of this whole quarantine thing all releases and all release schedules and all touring plans are obviously kind of just like out the window right now because release plans tend to be based around tour plans so like music musicians and artists will release music based around when they can tour to promote that music. Um, and that's like a big part of how people plan their releases. So because of the fact that there is no touring, possibly for the next like six months, that's kind of making all releases all releases kind of rethink their schedules. And I was actually right in the process of like putting together a release schedule for this music that I have ready to go. And this has kind of thrown a bit of a spanner in the works. That doesn't mean the music is not going to come out because it definitely is, but it's... um. It's just uncertain times, as we all know. Um, unit 01, at 010. I guess I have a question regarding Flash Drive EP. How did you do the sound design on that album? I try to figure it out, and it honestly is so rough. <laughs> um, there's a lot of different things that went into making the Flash Drive EP. Each song on it is quite different. I mean, I know a lot of people have sort of asked me to dissect the project files, and if I really wanted to go deep into the sound design elements of that, I would have to probably do that. I'd probably have to open up the um, the project files and like, um, like go deep into like the the different synth sounds and like, because I can't remember off the top of my head exactly what I did. I can give you a few little bits and pieces though. Um, the fl the bass the slap bass sound on the flash on the flash drive of the single is um, a sound that came out of the Korg M1 plugin, which is like a, a digital recreation of an old Korg M1 like um, piano hardware synth thing, which is like a classic unit um, from I think the early 80s. And um, yeah, it's like a, 
sort of iconic sound from that machine. And um, yeah, so I used that to make the like the slap bass sound and then I laid it up with a bunch of synths and effects. Um, let me see, on the intro track, that one with like the hard hitting synths and, and like drums and stuff, that took me so long to get right. You would not believe how many like versions of that song I had to make. Um, it did not come together easily. Um, bubble wrap is like a very sort of, um, it's a combination of sample based things and like, uh, synth stuff. And oh, just on one note about the drums actually that I use, uh, oh, P Peter Dactyl, thank you for the follow. Um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, yeah, the drums, and I will. Go, I was thinking of going over this in another stream or another video. I actually make a lot of the drum sounds that I use, I make them from scratch. So I don't necessarily just like scroll through sample libraries trying to find a good sample. I'll actually just build the sample myself. And there's a, little, there's a few ways you can do that. Um, there's a few really good methods that you can do. Like you can use pure synthesis or you can combine pure synthesis with... Um, samples or you can combine samples or you can do a mixture of all of those things and like and then there's you know the post-processing and all that stuff and I like I can I usually like I break down each of the layers of sound that I'm trying to create and I'll make I'll make things from scratch that way because I find that I have way more control if I do it that way and way more like um I guess flexibility and just like I don't have to rely on some other person's sample. I can just make my own. Um, and I do that with more or less every sound I use, cause it's just, which is, you know, it takes a, long, a bit longer, but that's part of why the sound design is unique and why it's like everything sits perfectly because I've molded it to fit that way. So yeah, I guess broadly speaking, I like not to rely on other people's stuff. I like to rely on my own skills to get things done. That's a good question though. And maybe in the future I'll go over more of the like the details, like go actually into the project files, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Oh wow, people are following me. That's awesome. Among the others, thank you for the follow. Drink Soju, thank you for the follow. How's the stream looking and sounding by the way? Is everything like working? I've never done this before, so. Sounds and looks great. Thank you. Good to know. She and I looks very crisp and good. Sounds great too. Awesome. I'm so glad because I have been trying to figure out how to make this work from a technical standpoint for a long time, but it seems to be working all right. Um, yeah, luckily I'm on the NBN. Thank you, NBN, for giving me reasonably good upload speeds. <laughs> um, Drink Soju says, love the visual direction with all the new stuff. The music video for this and that especially was incredible. Oh, thank you. I'm actually super duper proud of that. And I was actually kind of the creative director for that. Um, that was like conceptually, it was conceptualized by myself. Purple Bubble L, thank you for the follow. Um, yeah, no, I, I kind of creative directed that. We, we hired an animator, um, an animation like studio to like actually do the animation because I don't know how to do that. But all the concept design was done by me um, and the yeah it was all and it came together very very quickly and i'm super happy with how it looks um yeah that was a fun one to do turner rock says do you think we will see some unexpected music from artists now that everyone has some extra time um definitely but i think it will be um it will be casually constructed rather than like deliberately and carefully put together because it's like I said 
artists need to make a living and um the current business model in the music industry is that you release songs and then you tour and you sell tickets to make money so with the tick selling tickets to make money part out the window the music industry has to figure out a way to m make music profitable again um and it's probably going to involve selling other stuff um but yeah honestly i have no idea what that's going to be like but yeah i, I think that artists will definitely put stuff out um it'll just be like a while before we see artists actually um i guess putting stuff out that they expect to make money off of um or any reason i don't know i think we'll see a pivot of the way that artists and labels and stuff work um which is equally p equal parts scary and equal parts exciting because it's nice to have a fresh a fresh way to do things but it's also like it may not work and it may be unsuccessful so we'll have to wait and see it's going to take a long time to unfold i think just like every industry but you know shia nine auto was an awesome video too one of my favorite singles out of 2019 also oh thanks so much again that was created directed by myself and then um the lighting direction was done by someone who i uh someone named david fairless who's like a really good lighting director from australia he lives in melbourne which is where i live too and um me and him together kind of directed this lighting thing I came up with a concept and he's like a really good lighting guy and he sort of put together the low light show and then um, we filmed the summer rain video and the auto video on the same day and the um, the auto one was just literally just like a light show that had to be filmed and then I stepped in and did the guitar solo so all the the lighting direction was already pre-programmed and we just set it up and like press play on that and then I just came in and did the solo and we filmed it like twice and then we went with the first take so yeah um, oh, and then in post, we put the lyrics on top, obviously. But yeah, that one, I'm so proud of that. I'm, and I'm so glad people like it. <laughs> it was so fun to make. Um, Purple Bob Blell says, I love you. You literally were the one who inspired to start producing music. Intro is awesome. It's incredibly well done. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. I'm very glad to hear that. Um, and yeah, like I said, that song took a long time to get right. <laughs> so I'm glad it ended up that way. This and that was another one that took a long time to get right. That went through like 28 revisions. Well, I say 28, like 28 versions. Um, and then we settled on the 28th as like the final version. Took like a couple of years to get right. Among the others says, yeah, this is a weird time for artists. I was getting pretty close to relaunching my project, but I want to make sure to not come across as insensitive when I start sharing tunes and content now. The new project is very bright and positive. Yeah, I know what you mean. I think um, no one wants to be the guy who puts out something and then gets criticized for like trying to profit off a tragedy or a crisis because um, that's a very easy like thing to do. And I don't think anyone would deliberately do that. Well, maybe some people would, but most people would not deliberately try to do that. But uh, it's very hard to, to try and make a living without being accused of such a thing, um, which I think we all have to just accept that we're all going to be taking quite a significant loss um, in terms of our income and our creative output for the time being, um, which is going to suck. But... It's better than trying to take advantage of people um, or trying to take advantage of a bad situation. Yeah. That being said, I think people do still want to hear music. It's not like people don't want to listen to music. It's just like the business model of releasing music is going to change for the time being, I think. And I don't really know like what I mean when I say that. It's just like it's, uh, it's just going to be a different scenario where skh4 yo you're right back thanks for tuning in give us a follow if you like I'm trying to get up to 50 so i can be legitimized and validated hope you're doing all right during all this well thank you very much i'm doing just fine right now um obviously a little anxious and a little um uncertain as everybody is um but doing my part to just 
just remain calm and make sure that everybody who I'm close to is remaining calm and everyone is staying level-headed. Um, you know, it's a difficult time for everybody. H X. How do you say that? <laughs> See, when can we hear some stuff? Just joined. Um, look, I mean, I'm not really playing music today. I'm just sort of chatting right now, but I do have Ableton open. And I can play stuff. I haven't got anything in particular to show. Um, I just wanted to, like, communicate with people right now. But in the future, I, like, I was, before you joined, I was um, reaching out to try and get some suggestions with, like, sexy with an H. Hexy. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, uh, I was reaching out to, for suggestions about the kinds of things people wanted to see, and I mentioned that a lot of people were looking to see me dissect old projects, which I might try to do in the future, but I'm not going to be doing that right now because um, it requires a little bit of preparation. But I also thought it'd be cool to, like, if people had anything in particular that they were curious about on the production side of things, um, I could demonstrate that or show that or give some insight into that because um, it seems like people are interested in that. But, you know, not everyone's interested in production, but some people just want to, like, hang out and ask questions and chat to me and, like, that's cool too. Henry says, any dream artists you'd want to work with? Um, I get asked that a lot and I never know how to answer. Um, hello, Puppy Mountain. Give us a follow. Uh, <laughs> nah, that's my friend Chris. Hey, Chris, how you going? Thanks for joining in. Everyone say hi to Puppy Mountain. That's my friend Chris. Say hello, Christopher. Uh... Yeah, no, <laughs> dream artists I'd want to work with. Um, I don't know. That's like, I just try to, I mean, at the moment, I'm very focused on just making my own stuff. I'm very focused on, um, <laughs> I'm very focused on, uh, on, on the self, the output of myself. Um, collaborations are all well and good, but I find I don't flourish as much in that context. I am much more. I find that my output is much better and much more refined when I um, do it myself. That's a pretty cool sound though. For anyone who's wondering, I just have like a little MIDI keyboard right beside me. This one is the Yamaha Reface CS and it's a cool little um, digital polysynth by Yamaha. And it sounds very analog. It's meant to replicate the Yamaha CS series. And it's very cute and mini. Can highly recommend it. You very much agree on the collabs. Yeah, I think a lot of people do, but they probably just don't want to say it because it's not cool. Is that controversial? I don't know. Hexy says, have you worked with Logic Pro X? What's your thoughts on early production? I've never used Logic. Well, that's a lie. I've like I've used it, but I never like made anything with it. Um What's your thoughts on early production? What do you mean by early production? Like the early stages of production? If you clarify, I might be able to answer that better. Shia9 says, Are you a proficient keys player or do you manually mainly work inside Piano Roll? I am not a proficient keys player. I wish I was better. I'm not. 
I do practice though. I'm trying to get better. I'm a proficient guitar player, and that's where my music knowledge generally comes from. Um, but I do work in the piano roll a lot. Yes. Oh, for beginners, Hexy says, what's the thoughts on early production for beginners? Um, I would probably just say, like, I mean, it really depends on your context. I don't know how everyone starts at a different point because some people have a bigger, a better background or, like, more technology around them or, like, more resources available to them. I, so I'd have to give you a very generalized answer. But... um. The main thing to remember is there's so much to learn and you'll never stop learning. So don't try to look for some sort of shortcut or like like find some secret that everyone's hiding that makes you good or professional because there is no such thing. It's just a matter of spending a lot of time, like a lot of time practicing everything and learning absolutely everything. Um, so yeah, just whatever is whatever thing you want to learn, teach yourself how to do it or teach yourself like how it works and then you'll have a better time in the future because no shortcuts allowed that's my mantra thank you for the follow bean dip supreme i do like bean dip i have a notification what does that mean oh i got a twitch a twitch achievement epic Among the others says, I like Logic. I do all of my sessions with clients who need me to engineer in Logic. That's cool. I'm an Ableton user personally. Um, a lot of people I know use Logic and, you know, speak highly of it. So that's cool. Um, I just, I'm just super comfortable in Ableton and I don't really see that changing. Peter Dactyl says, what's your DJ setup these days? Um, I don't have a DJ setup these days. I'm actually, my live shows these days are a live band show. Um, my most recent shows, Falls Festival, were a three-piece band. So it's about the furthest thing from DJing. I used to just use a laptop and an Akai controller, but, um, you know, that's not what I do anymore. So Puppy Mountain says, what do you do for fun? That is an excellent question. Recently, it's been playing Animal Crossing, uh, eating lots of food. I like to cook. Um, cooking's fun. Um, I like going to the movies. I like horror films. <laughs> Among the others says, I also do my scoring work in Logic, but I prefer FL for getting creative fast. Yeah, FL is pretty popular too. I've never used FL. Can't, can't say I know anything about FL. Um, but that's cool. Chia31 says, Oh, thank you for following me, Hexy, and where sk for. Chia says, Hello, do you have any techniques for side chaining ducking the bass? I never seem to get it right. LOL. Yeah, that can be tricky. Um, I mean, to be honest, I used to just generally throw a compressor. Like, Ableton has a compressor which the, with a built in side chain routing thing. So I would just, like, here, I'll show you. I would go, like, compressor and then you would like expand it out and there's a sidechain button right there and then you just select which output you want to be sidechained from and then you set your compression settings there and that will usually give me like a pretty good I get pretty close to what I wanted um, I know a lot of people who use different methods like they'll physically go in and do volume automation as their sidechain ducking which is a lot more precise but it's also a lot more tedious there are other plugins you can use. There's one that I know of, which is um, like a trigger gate thing. I can't remember the name of it. Trigger gate something, trigger something. It's really, it's cool. It does like, it does like sample perfect, like ducking and it's triggered by MIDI. So you send a MIDI thing to it and it automatically does a volume duck. So it's not really a compressor. It's more like a gate and that's really precise. Um, but yeah, you can find there's lots there's lots of different techniques and it really depends on the sounds you're going for. Um, certain bass sounds won't necessarily sound good with certain techniques and some will. And, you know, depends on the drum sounds as well. 
and um, just the overall mix and the balance of your frequencies. So there's a lot of things that come into play. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have a particular secret or technique that I can give you for that. Henry says, loved your time in Pablo Jane the Lobsterettes. Takes me back. Wow. That takes me back too. It's a long time ago. Um, everyone, I, I get asked a cra- like so much about that. It's wild how many people know about that. That blows my mind. I thought like only I knew about it, you know? <laughs> uh, Shia9 says, I get three new villages on my island tomorrow. I'm so excited. Oh, that's exciting. I've only played twice. I haven't actually dived deep into it. I, I need to get my villages up and I need to do some more exploring and um, maybe I'll stream it. What do you reckon? <laughs> Me and like a million other people. Um, who knows? If people are interested, I'll do it. I don't care. Um, is this is this broken? No, we're good. Among the others, I also like Ableton. They have so many features I wish all doors would adopt. And sound design is so easy in Ableton. That's true. FL has limited effect slots per channel and it kills me. Yeah, that would be so annoying. Um, oh, Gatekeeper. That is, that's the one. That is the, that is exactly the one I was thinking of. Thank you for that. Um, hell yeah, stream it. Okay. I do have a capture card. I just have to set it up. Um, FL has limited effect slots per channel. That's super weird. How do you, like, what's the limit? And how do you deal with that if you need to go above the limit? That would be super stressful for me because I use, like, dozens of effects on certain things um yeah ableton all the way man ableton all the way how long have i been going for i don't even know how to tell. oh i've been going for 44 minutes that's cool i might log off soon and make some dinner because i'm getting hungry but it's been cool to do this and i might do it again i probably will do it again <laughs> feel free to leave like a suggestion or um or some kind of uh like just message me or tweet me or um whatever instagram dm whatever works for you there is also like a random suggestion box on the twitch channel which you can use if you want to um just do it there um like i'd like to know if there's anything specific um or any particular song that you'd like me to go into more detail about or any technique, um, or any sound, or anything like that, because I can do that. We have the technology, which is fun. Um, among the others, says, yep, so you've got to route your channel into another channel to get more effect. Oh, so you got to do busing. That's super frustrating. What's the point of that? <laughs> uh, Henry, how do you feel about people trying to describe your own sound like future bass instruments? I'm very indifferent to that. I don't really understand the term, because I've never actually... No one's ever shown me what that means or where that comes from. It's never really made any sense to me. Um, but I don't care because I'm happy that people are listening to my music. Um, and it's not really up to me, I guess, to describe it. It's just up to me to like make it and put it out there. Um, it's easier for me to just not think about that. Because <laughs> um, I don't necessarily understand how people are going to perceive what I make. And it's not up to me how they perceive it. So if they want to call it future bass or if they want to describe it as like ultra glitter, neon hyper pop or whatever it might be, then that's fine. Um, but it's also not necessarily accurate in my brain, but that's okay. It's fine. Um, would love to see you break down world record. Okay, I can do that. Um, I'll have to do it another time because I'll have to find the project file and um, I'll have to maybe have to even like neaten up the project or something because who knows if it's like, if it'll even like, because I've upgraded Ableton since then so I might have to do some like weird compatibility stuff. But yeah, I'll give that a go and um, keep an eye out, I suppose. Uh, are those Audio Technica M70X? No, they're Audio Technica M50X. I've owned like four pairs of these. They're really good. Um, until, of course, the speaker cones wear out unevenly and then you have to replace them. 
but that's alright. They're pretty. They're pretty affordable. So. Um. Thank you for the follow. Hat V. Hat TVN or Hat Vin. <laughs> okay, it's sleep time for you. It's one a.m. here. Oh wow, you must be in the states. I'm guessing. But I'm a big fan, so I had to stop by. Well, thanks very much for stopping by. Have a good sleep. I hope you um, enjoy the rest of your night. And um, thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Thanks for following. Um, yeah. Yes, they are nice. They are. Um, yeah, I'm going to head off soon as well, actually. This was just a, a basic test run of streaming. Um, let's see. What's, what's going on on Twitter? Because I tweeted out before. Let's see if anyone cares. Not really. <laughs> Just whenever you stream, please tweet it out so I see. I'm going to head to bed now. Currently, it's 4.10 a.m. Wow, it's late. Go to bed. Good night and hope to see you soon. Good night and I'll see you soon. Thanks very much for tuning in. Do you like biking? Um, no, I don't actually have a bike. I was thinking of buying one. Should I get one? Wow, I tweeted and two people liked it. That's great. Thanks, everyone. Um, I guess I need to figure out a better way to get the word out about the fact that I'm streaming. Um, have you checked out the Porter Robinson singles? I don't know if you would agree, but I s really see a lot of parallels between your new music and the direction you're both taking with pop writing and stuff. Yeah, I would actually definitely agree with that. I 100% agree with that. I really like the um, the first single that he put out for the new release the new album, what I can't remember what it's called. Um, not something comforting, the one before that. Um, that was really cool. I liked that song a lot. And the video was great too. Um, but yeah, Porter's a good guy. Um, yeah, but anyway, that's that's going to wrap it up, I think, for today. Um, I'm hoping you all are enjoying hearing me talk randomly. Um, I'd like to improve the quality <laughs> of this content if I can, but, you know, I'm just getting started, so... Oh, Get Your Wish, that's right. Has 1975's creative director, that's exactly right. Um, Sam Burgess Johnson, so fucking good. Really love his creative direction. Um, Cashmere Cat also. Yeah. He's another friend. He's really cool. Um, but anyway, I got to head off. How do you say bye-bye on Twitch? What's the protocol? How do people do it? How do you say it's over and I got to go? Thanks, dude. This was so unexpected. Looking forward to the next stream. Cool. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I will uh, hopefully be back again soon. Cool. Well, bye guys, and stay safe, self-isolate, um, look after yourselves and one another. Okay, see you later. <laughs>